option two, you'll be using the Web Soil Survey to find soils information on a specific property. Web Soil Survey is an online resource uh, that provides information and data on soils across the country. Soil survey data used to be published in hard copy books. Uh, these books would include detailed information about the, the area that's included in the survey and then descriptions of the different soil types that are found in that area. There would be maps that would uncover the entire um, area of the soil survey that would show where different soil types are delineated. So you can see in this example uh, map here, there's an aerial photograph and then there's different uh, polygons drawn on it to show the different map the map or soil map types and where they occur. And all of these are labeled so you can look up information about the soil types that occur in, on your farm or on your property. The soil surveys would also include uh, suitability interpretation data. And this is similar to what you just did in uh, section one uh, for, for the soils part of the Envirothon, where you used soil property data to make interpretations about how suitable that site would be for different uses. Uh, the soil survey have provided that information. So if you know you have a specific soil type on your property, you could look up and see if it would be suitable for agriculture, for building houses, for uh, building roads, um, forestry uses. And this is an example of one of those tables. It shows different soil map units and then uh, gives a land capability class and yield estimates for different types of crops. Now all the soil survey data is available online uh, and this allows us to make updates uh, more readily to the soil survey information and it also makes it more accessible um, for everyone to find that information. You don't have to have the book. Um, this is available online. So you can look up a specific area. Um, you can see these polygons showing the different map units and then there's uh, you can find descriptions of the map units and then also find those same suitability and interpretation tables. And I'll be going through how to find this information in this video. In section two, we'll give you a scenario. Um, so in this example, scenarios that you've acquired a farm in Allegheny County and you wanna build a house as well as do some farming and manage the woodland. So you'll have this scenario and then we'll ask you to use the web soil survey to ask to answer uh, specific questions about what limitations uh, this what limitations for use and management you might find with the soils on this property and um, kind of get you thinking about where would be suitable for certain practices based on the soils on the property uh, so the questions uh, on the during the contest, the questions will kind of walk you through how to find the different answers to these questions. Um, but this video will also kind of show you where these things are so you can get a little familiar with it before the contest. To start, we'll navigate to the Web Soil Survey homepage. You click this green button right in the center to start. It'll open up a new tab. And you'll see here we've got a map uh, where we can select our area of interest and then we have some different navigation tools along the side here. Since we know our property is in Allegheny County, an easy way for us to set our area of interest or the, um, the location we want to focus on is to use this soil survey area tab. So we'll just click the drop down menu there. We'll select for our state. Maryland, and then we'll put in our county, Allegheny County. Then it'll show us uh, the different soil survey areas. So here we just have one option. So we could select Allegheny County. Um, and then you can set AOI, and that'll set your area of interest as the entire county. But since we told you the map units were focused on for the question, you can click, you can click on Select Map Units. 
And if you scroll back up here, you'll see we'll have a list of all the map units that are located in Allegheny County. So we're going to select uh, the map units that are on the property we're interested in. So the first one we have is this uh, has a map symbol AEA for Allegheny Loam. And then our next one is BUB. Scroll down. So I can scroll, scroll through and select these. I can also um, put the symbol in this menu bar here. So we'll put in EKC there. LNA. OND. So now I've selected the five map units that I'm interested in my, on my property. And so the next thing I'll do is go up here and I'm going to click on Soil Data Explorer on this tab. Now you see we've got a map of Allegheny County and these orange lines actually show us all the different soil map unit delineations in the county. And you can zoom in and pan around on the map if you want to focus on specific areas. So the first thing we want to find out information on is in your question, you know, it said you were interested in using this property for agriculture. So we're going to find out about some of the different suitabilities of the soil for agriculture. So up at the top here, I'm going to click on soil reports. And on the side here, you can see I have a different a bunch of different soil reports that I can access. First one we're going to look at is vegetative productivity and this will give us information about suitability for crop production. So click that uh, drop down tab and now we'll select irrigated and non-irrigated yields by map unit component. Just drop that one down and here you can select which crops you're interested in getting yield information on. So we'll, for this example, I'm going to select alfalfa, hay, and corn. And this tape, the table that'll come up will give me yield information for each of the soil map units that I selected for these crops. So I click View Soil Report. And now you can see down here we've got a table. It shows us um, for each of the map units that we had selected, the land capability classes, and then yield uh, estimates for each of those map soil map units. Uh, so you can see each of these map units, I've got a land capability class assigned to them. And these are the same land capability classes that we looked at in section one of the Envirothon test. If we scroll down uh, below the table, there's actually a description. And so you can learn more about the different land capability classes and the restrictions that are associated with each of these classes. And then it also has information on the subclasses. And that's the small letter that occurs after the number. Uh, and these uh, subclasses just tell you a little bit more about the specific risks or limitations of that soil within its capability class. So an example question you might get is which of the soil map units on your farm would be considered prime farmland? And remember that's soils that have land capability, have land capability classes of one or two. So in this example, we can see that uh, the Allegheny soil and the Buchanan soil and the Linside soil are all examples of prime farmland. Now, if we look over here at our yield estimates, we can see for each of these soil map units, the expected yields for if we planted alfalfa hay and for corn. Um, so we might ask you questions about which map units would you expect the highest yield for a specific crop or which map units may not produce as high of yielding crops. Uh, so if we just look at the corn, you can see of the soil map units here, this LNA or Linside map unit has the highest expected corn yields of 170 bushels per acre, whereas uh, both this, uh, the BUB and EKC map units have uh, the expected yields for corn are only 95 bushels per acre. 
Now we also suggested that in um, this scenario, you're interested in possibly building a house on the property. So we wanna get some information about suitability for building. So if we go back up and I'm gonna close these tabs because I don't need them anymore. And if you look, we've got a soil report here for building site development. So I'm gonna open that one up. And then this first one is dwellings and small commercial buildings. So open that. And then we can click on view soil report. And this will open up a new table. Now we scroll down and look at this table. And for each of the map units, we have suitability ratings for uh, using those soils for dwellings without basements, dwellings with basements, and for small commercial buildings. And you'll see for each map unit, um, they're assigned a limitation rating uh, going from not limited to uh, very limited. So you can see, for example, the, this AEA or the Allegheny map unit, there's no limitations uh, if you wanted to build a dwelling with a without a basement, with a basement, or for a small commercial building. But some of these other map units, like Buchanan, it's, uh, for example, very limited for a dwelling with a basement. And underneath, uh, for the ones that have limitations, you can see underneath, they tell you what those restrictions are. So in the case of the Buchanan map unit, uh, it's very limited for a dwelling with a basement. Uh, and, because, and the reason why is the depth to the saturated zone. So there's a high water table that comes near the surface and that could make it difficult to put a basement in. Again, it's not saying that you can't do it. Um, you just might have, um, you might need some additional practices to make sure that basement stays dry. You might need a sump pump and it might cost more money to, depending on what your limitations are. Each of these limitations has a number going from zero to one. And basically as it becomes uh, more and more of a limitation or restriction, it, it has a higher value. And if you go down to the bottom here, you'll see that there's a table that basically explains kind of what I just talked about with the different limitation ratings and the numerical ratings, uh, kind of getting at how big of an impact each restriction might be. And then it also explains to you how each of these ratings are assigned uh, for each of the um, things in the report. So, you know, what, what soil properties did they consider when they looked at suitability for dwellings with or without basements? So an example of a question we might ask you is, you know, given the soil map units on, your, on this property, which soil map units would be best for building a house with a basement or which might be worse worst for building a house with a basement. And so you'll look through the limitations, you know, these limitation ratings and kind of try to pick the ideal spot. Based on what we have here, we have a, this AEA Allegheny map unit that there's no limitations. Whereas all of our other soils, you see very limited, somewhat limited, very limited, and very limited. So really the best place you know, the place that would probably be most ideal for putting a house with a basement would be somewhere in this Allegheny map unit soil. Another thing we can look at um, is if we go back up under building site development, you saw there was also roads and streets. Uh, so we can open up that table. You can see in this table, it gives us uh, suitabilities for lawns and landscaping locals roads and streets and shallow excavations. And this table is set up, you know, very similar to the last one for each map unit. It tells you uh, a limitation rating and then what the what soil properties are restrictive. And then the, the value rating kind of gives you an idea of how significant that limitation might be. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is we also talked about maybe wanting to use this farm for, uh, to manage the woodland in the forest. Uh, so we're gonna look under land management and you can see here we've got a tab for forest land planting and harvesting. We open that one up and view soil. And then in this table, you can see it gives us um, suitability for planting and harvesting of trees. And, you know, kind of just the same as the last one, we get ratings for each of the soil types that we've selected and then what the soil, the limiting soil properties are for the ones that um, 
are you know, more limiting. And again, down at the bottom, we have a description kind of explaining the ratings and then what each of the different um, uh, uses or activities that are being evaluated and what soil properties uh, we look at to make those evaluations. So this is just kind of to give you an idea of how to navigate the web soil survey for the Envirothon exam. You know, we'll give you different questions of things you should, uh, we want you to determine which soils might be most suitable or least suitable or um, what restrictions you might have on the um, different activities or land uses for a given uh, property. And we'll sh um, help you navigate through in the questions. It'll help you navigate and direct you to the correct soil reports. Uh, but this is something that's really easy for you to practice on your own. You can uh, you know, look at all the soils within a county, or you can even, um, if you wanna focus on the soils where you live, uh, and you can look up different reports and find out information about them.